Your architectural identity is defined by your title block. And today I'm giving away so many free title blocks for Rayon Design. What's going on team? My name is David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today I'm going to show you exactly how to create the perfect title block in rayon.design, how to have custom parameters so you don't have to duplicate a million different blocks and you can change individual items for individual pages. And of course, I'm gonna give it all away at the end for free. Now, it's been a minute since we talked about Rayon Design. If you haven't been here before, it's simply rayon.design. No .com, no .au, just rayon.design. Once you've signed in or signed up, you're gonna find yourself at the homepage. Now, today we're talking about this title block template, which I'm gonna share with you all at the very end of the video. What you should see is six pages in front of you with six different title blocks. Now, for the purposes of this video, I've included my title block, but you're gonna see a different one in the template for you guys. Like I said, a title block is your brand's identity. It what speaks volumes on site and what is the most recognizable. So you want a title block that is incredibly iconic straight away. That's typically defined by your logo, either at the very top if it's a right hand title block or in along the bottom if it's a horizontal strip. Now there's pros and cons to each one of them and I recommend you create multiple for multiple different scenarios. Regardless, let's have a look at this first title block. It's a block in Rayon, meaning we can move it, drag it, right click, copy, paste, and do whatever we need with this title block. So if we want it on the right, if we want it on the left, no problem, we can do anything without having to individually select every bit of text and every line. But we're jumping so far ahead. How do we even get to this point here? Well, it's super simple with Rayon Design. We come down to the bottom and we start using either our polyline or our line tool. So if we simply come down to the bottom, we can start drawing our line, finish off with one line, and it will use the last saved style. Now to adjust that, we click on the line type, we go to our editor panel on the right hand side and we simply change the properties. So first of all, I want that to be a black line. I want it to be five mil and I don't need a dash. So I'm happy without a dash. And there you go, we have our first line down below. We can control C and control V to copy quickly, drag up and we're replicating the scale as noted. After that, we go in to our text down the bottom, click once and then type. So in this instance, I'm just gonna repeat scale as noted. Again, on the right hand panel, we can change our fonts. Let's go Lato. We can change our alignment. We can change our height, width, everything. And then we change our text size here. Now this is on square feet for whatever reason. So come down to the bottom, arrow up, area units, length unit. I'm just gonna change that both to millimeters. So now my text is five millimeters, 10 millimeters, whatever I need, 10 millimeters back to five. That makes a lot more sense to me, but depends where you are around the world. You can easily change that at any time. Now, the rest of all of this is exactly the same principles, lines, texts, repeated time and time again. The only difference is if you wanted to include a logo, we would come up to the top to menu, import image, find your logo in your browser, open it up and it will load your logo. Then you can go ahead, place it anywhere on the title block, right click, arrange, either bring it forward or back wherever you need, and then obviously scale by selecting any of the corners. Now, if you wanted to feel like this, there's a number of ways we can do that. We can use a zone if we wanted to, or we could simply draw a polyline square, finish it off, and then make sure our properties are correct as we want. So for instance, here I have a line. Let's remove that line so there's no outline. And then I have a solid fill of gray 20%. I can lighten that up if I want to. I can change that to red or potentially blue, whatever we need or our heart desires. And then drag it behind, right click, arrange, center back layer, and then that way your logo and all your text is at the front. Once you've done all of those items, you can simply highlight, come to the bottom and create a block, which is where we end up at this scenario. Now what you'll see in this block title is if I simply double click on A00, I can automatically change my sheet numbers or I can go ahead and type A01, for instance. Now, typically on a title block without custom parameters, if I was to copy and paste this over and change A01 again, both of them would change and align. But in this case, I've changed A02 and only the individual block that I've changed has adjusted. This is a huge update from Rayon because previously you had to copy and paste your title block over time and time and time again, explode it and then retype. This is an absolute game changer. By clicking on that title block, you can see there's two custom properties on this, the drawing name and the drawing number. Everything else is manual text. 
So if I double click on this project, for example, and go YouTube Trayon, press change, it'll change it on both of them. No matter what changes I make, it's making them on both. But let's say we wanted the scale to be something different. Well, number of ways we can do that. The easiest way is simply click on our title bar, go to add property down the bottom. We can turn on scale and then scale will automatically appear, but it's grayed out. It's not blue because nothing is linked. So now we double click, go all the way in until we get to our text that says scale as noted. And we go add variable. Then we scroll down to instance and hit scale. After that, we simply press okay and go done. Now there's nothing in that contents box and it's really hard to find because we've left it blank over here. But if we simply came back to our text content and typed in scale one to 100, that's finished complete. Same system over here, add an instance, scale, scale, let's go one to 200 in that scenario. And now we have two title blocks, two different scale numbers, two different sheet numbers, everything adjusted accordingly. That same principle applies if you're using a horizontal title bar across the bottom. And in this scenario, we have significantly more custom properties set up. So for instance, let's change a 02. Project number becomes DT100, and that changes in our project number here. Scale, one to 50. Drawing name, we'll type in YouTube Rayon, and that's changed up the top left-hand corner. And project, it could simply be title blocks, and that changes in our project. Now, made by is obviously text, so just change that to your name. And project address, again, text, whatever you'd like, because that isn't gonna change throughout the entire title block. You can add these instances for so many different things. So if you click the plus button, obviously there's some pre-made properties here in this template. None of these are gonna be there in a generic project. You have to add as much as you want in here. And to do that, you simply go add new property, call it whatever you wanna add, scale, made by project address, let's just go example. And then the type can be a text, number, length, area, volume, price, yes, no options, links, single select, whatever you really needed. You can mess with these settings until you're happy. And then the value as a default blanket item should always generally match the name so that you know what it is when it's added to your title block and if it's ever blank. Now, like I mentioned previously, there's a couple examples here. We have a generic horizontal title block at the bottom, a little bit more mainstream with all your information in the bottom right. So as they flick through pages on site, you can see everything in the bottom right hand corner. That's critical. And then project notes, for example, in the left, that isn't as critical if you're flicking through, you actually need to be looking at that page to understand it. Another vertical title bar example, this one is a bit cleaner in my opinion. First of all, you have your rayon or your logo up the very, very top, meaning it's easily identifiable. Brand recognition is amazing on this one. Big page numbers makes it, again, easy to flick through, find pages. And then it's even got a key plan for your locality areas if your project is massive. The only downside is obviously project notes is a little small. Anybody that's doing architectural documentation lately will know that there's hundreds and hundreds of notes per project. So that section is a bit small for my liking. If anything, I would move this north point down here personally just so you can have a bit more in your project notes again another typical horizontal title block across the bottom north moved in the correct location but this one in my personal opinion isn't as good as the one above or even the one that's vertical above just because the page number is way too hard to find it's on the left side but if for whatever reason in your country you're flicking on the left hand side more than your right hand side then this one is absolutely perfect. I've also included mine here on screen just so you guys can get a taste of what mine looks like. Now, there's a couple of things that need updating on this since it was created, those being the size of the layout ID and the size of the project number. Otherwise, the title block is still very much relevant for me in practice, and it's been designed to basically copy and paste for you guys so you can import all of your data, all of your information and move forward. Anyway, that's all for me today, team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And like always, I'll see you next week.